Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, my name is Cordant and we're back to continue our playthrough of Solasta, Crown of the Magister. Of the Magister, problems speaking that word. Can I talk to you? We'll talk after you're swearing in. Ah, okay. So, in the last episode we were dealing with the um, introduction part of the game. We had a tutorial for each of our companions. And then we met a fella by the name of Lord Karen, which sent us into this area, Ker Siflin, where apparently we are gonna be doing our main quest. We are currently looking for a place called the Legacy Council, and we are due for a swearing in. I think it's around this area. Nice gardens. The Empire Abbas Embassy. Okay. Ah, here he is. Hello. Look at the size of this council hall. So this is what they spend our taxes on. Look, is that the princess? Wait, is she leaving? Apparently so. Then who will administer the oath? I love my tiny team. <laughs> She's tiniest. Okay. Um. There's an oath keeper for that, I think. You thought it would be the princess? Doesn't she lead the council? No. In this chamber, she's just another delegate. Lady Keen, the council's oath keeper, is trusted by all. Lord Karen. Yes, my lady. Are these your new deputies? Ah, oh, they are, large. lady. My name is Lyra Keen, oath keeper of the council. Shush. Quiet, everyone. And I will be administering your vows. Once sworn in, you will carry the authority of the council wherever you go. Your every action will reflect upon the council's reputation. Remember that, always. Now, please, raise your right hands. Do you, each and all, solemnly swear your lives and allegiance to this council and promise to carry forth our mission to protect our alliance from any who would threaten the common good. I, I swear. swear. Excellent. Kind of a weird thing to do. Lord Karen will enter your okay. name into the council's register. Thank you for your service. Congratulations, deputies. Wait, that's it. Stop wasting time. What's the mission? Well, a motivated deputy. So, the mission. As I'm sure you know, the council maintains a number of outposts to secure the border between the Principality and the Marches. One of them is the former Imperial Fortress, KLM. It's held by some 50 troops under the command of Captain Henrik. He sends us weekly status reports, or rather, he used to. We haven't heard a word from him in three weeks. Leave immediately for KLM and find out if anyone there is still alive. If Captain Henrik or anyone else is still breathing, bring him back. The Council wants a first-hand report. Hmm. Wait, these marches... They're not in the Badlands, are they? The Marches are a no-man's land, between the civilized world and the Badlands. It's outside the chain of mountains that really define the Badlands. We wouldn't send you in there, yet. What can you tell us about this Captain Henrik? A fine officer, more than 15 years in the Principality's army. He inspires trust, loyalty, and courage. Hence, the decision to post him there, facing danger. I see. Right, I guess that's that. It's on to KLM. Okay. So, faction relations. The five council factions have representatives in Ker Siflin. They can sell you equipment, spells, and many other things. The better your relationship with the faction, the more they have to offer and the lower their prices. However, these factions are in competition with each other, which means you can't please them all. Various subquests will give you opportunities to improve your relationship with one faction or another. Keep an eye on the faction section of the journal. Okay. Location map. Press the map button to open location map. Mm -hmm. 
When a waypoint has been found, you can use it to fast travel to another place in the location. For now, you can use fast travel to return to the Gravekeeper's cask. Okay. Understood. Ooh, we leveled up. Okay. I guess I'll level up during the rest, maybe? Can I speak to these guys yet? I think these are ambassadors. There's life yet, adventurers. Maraiki, smile on you. Mm. Lady of life, a follower of the goddess. Uh. We do require your services. Okay, so he sells stuff. And I guess it depends on his faction, which is apparently the Principality of Masgarth. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so I want nothing from you. Still not used to the camera controls. Ugh. Okay. Let's just try and fast travel here. So we want to go to the Gravekeeper's Cask, which is over here. Yes, I want to. Let's go. And here we are. Okay, so here we have Mr. Kettle Martel. Let's see if I can speak to the drunk first. Uh, go get killed in the Badlands. Oh, thank you, kind sir. Hello, adventurers. What can I offer you? Wow. Well. Hmm. We'd like to stay for the night. Sure. Just walk up to the suite and settle in. A suite? Oh, it's more like a large bedroom, really. But you know, this is the capital city. Oh, fancy. Okay, so we have had a long rest. So now we can level up and prepare our spells. So we're going to start by leveling up Mr. Corgan here, which should be simple. We got 10 hit points and we unlocked the class feature which is Action Surge. Regain a main action immediately. Take a short or long rest to recover this power. Wonderful. We're gonna go for Patricia, which should also be easy. Gain some hit points and she got a cunning action. You can take a bonus action on each of your turns in combat. This action can be used only to take the dash, disengage or a hide action. Okay, simple enough. Level up Mrs. Halbert. Cleric spellcasting spell slots first times one. We got channel divinity. We can use channel divinity actions be once between rests. And we have turn undead. Channel Divinity to force undead creatures within six cells who can see you to flee, unless they make a successful wisdom saving throw. Decisive Strike. On a successful attack, Channel Divinity to add 1d6 to your damage and stun your target. Goddamn. Increases by 1d6 every three levels above level 2. Nice. And now for myself... Ah, Arcane Tradition, so I am granted a specialization with a certain kind of magic. Spell slots first times one, two spells to select, and we unlocked a class feature, which is Arcane Recovery. Once per day, when you complete a short rest, you can recover a number of extended, uh, expended spell slots, max 5th level, up to half of your wizard level rounded up. Cool. Okay, so Traditions. We have the Green Mage. Green Mages are the heirs to the ancient traditions of the Sylvan Elves. They are wardens of the forest, specialize in nature magic and also reliable bowmen, trained to survive without spells if need be, as they had to in the wake of the Cataclysm. So this means we have spells from the Green Magic list are considered wizard spells for me. So Animal Friendship, Detect Poison Disease, Entangle, Fairy Fire, okay so um, I guess druid spells I can cast. Smithing. You are trained to craft basic ammunition with smith's tools, arrows and bolts. We are proficient with light armor. 
And we also gain a proficiency in the short bow and fighting style archery. We are also a natural explorer. You benefit from the same advantages as rangers when in a forest environment. At higher levels we get entangling shot. Okay, this is archery based. And leaf scales. Halving damage. Okay. <clears throat> we also have the Lord Master. Lord Masters are obsessed, obsessed with the lost knowledge of pre-cataclysm times. They know the old empire had superior magic and they long to learn more about the lost spells and rituals. Their magic is focused on gathering all possible knowledge. So, Keen Mind. Advantage on Arcana, History and Investigation Ability checks. Advantage to copy scrolls to your spellbook. And scroll and potion crafting costs and times are halved. Okay. At higher levels, we can learn one additional spell each time you get a level. And at level 10, you can add your proficiency bonus to the number of spells you can memorize. You also learn two additional cantrips from the wizard's list. Okay. And then Shock Arcanist, we have Arcane Warfare. Uh, before that. Shock Arcanists were the battle mages of the Ma Manichalan Empire. Their teachings have survived the Cataclysm to become a renowned and feared magical tradition taught in every major magic school. Before this, Arcane Warfare. When casting spells from the war list, they count as being cast at one slot level higher than the one you actually use. So Burning Hands, Magic Missile, Thunder Wave, Acid Arrow, Scorching Ray, Flaming Sphere, Fireball, Lightning Bolt, Ice Storm and Cone of Cold. At higher levels we get Arcane Fury, where we can add our proficiency bonus and int bonus to your evocation spell damage for one minute. Nice. And we have Arcane Shock. You overcharge your mana and become restrained with, until the end of your turn. However, when you cast an attack spell, your damage dice are always above average. In return, you make a con saving throw DC 14 and take 2d6 psychic damage if you fail. Okay. So I guess this is pretty much damage, versatility, and archery magic build, I guess. I'm gonna be honest, the one that seems the most interesting here is honestly the green mage. It looks cool to use. Um, this seems to be more efficient also. But I think I'm gonna go for the Shock Arcanist to make um, a, a pure mage build. Not messing around with archery in this class. So we're gonna go with Shock Arcanist here. And we can learn two extra spells. Okay, so what do we want? I think I'm going to take... Featherfall, in case we need it. We can cast Identify without having it memorized, but we need to spend 10 minutes to cast it, that's fine. Protect versus Evil and Good is also cool. It doesn't actually say here. Ah, have disadvantages to attack a target and cannot charm, frighten or possess it. Okay. This is a cool spell also. But I think I'm going to take Mage Armor here. <clears throat> because this will pretty much allow me to get extra armor class at the cost of one uh, level 1 spell and it lasts for 8 hours. So I'm gonna take this one. <clears throat> so Mage Armor and Featherfall. 4 spell preparations. I want my Cleric... Hmm... Magic Missile. <laughs> I mean, we have Inflict Wounds. This deals 3d10, which is a lot of damage. We have Healing Ward, which is pretty cool. Guiding Bolt is a ton of damage as well. Bane to debuff our opponents. Minus 1d4 to attacks, minus 1d4 to saving throws. Bless is the, the same thing, but buff my party. Hmm. I think for now I'm gonna take out 
Oh, this is already memorized. Oh, wonderful. Oh, and this one is as well. Okay, I'm happy. Then I suppose... I could also take Protect versus Evil and Good, but I'm just going to go for Inflict Wounds for some extra damage here. Let's validate the spells and validate the Wizard spells. I want to take away Featherfall for now, take Mage Armor. And this is what I want. Okay. Let's close it up. And now our quest says buy some food for the journey. Okay. So I think we need to exit from here. It's night time. And our quest is apparently also marked on the minimap. Uh, we have both of these. Okay. Crafting. In Solasta you can craft various items. To do so, you need the proper equipment, ingredients, skill and time. For magical items, sometimes you need to know spells. Crafting is performed while traveling, once your party has set up camp but is not yet sleeping. Characters can devote some of their free time to working on their current crafting task. These are the tools required for crafting. For potions, and herbalism kit. For scrolls, a scroll kit. And poisons, a poisoner's kit. Okay, simple enough. Enchanted weapons and armor. A manicalan rosary. This one, I suppose. You'll need to be proficient with these tools to use them. Even if you're proficient with a given crafting tool, you'll still need specific skills to make successive checks against the recipes you see. To craft potions, sometimes medicine is enough, but arcana is very useful. To craft poisons, medicine or nature is useful, and to craft scrolls or enchanted items, arcana is a must. Crafting requires ingredients and can be found while adventuring and gathered from flowers, bushes and rocks, and sometimes from dead creatures. Okay. Obviously you can also buy them from shops unless they are very rare. Enchanting requires primed items that have been magically prepared for enchanting by a manical and master smiths whose secrets were lost with the cataclysm. Generally, a primed item will require a very rare additional ingredient to fulfill its potential. Finally, to craft an item, you need to know which ingredients to combine. These recipes can be learned by reading manuals or taught by masters. Slastan factions generally keep copies of recipes and sell them at good prices to their friends, but some can be found out there in the Badlands too. Mm -hmm. Once it's learned, everybody can use it. And to start crafting, open a character screen and click on the crafting tab. Simply select the recipes available to start. Okay, progress bar will fill as you travel and you'll be notified when the operation is over. So you can launch another one if you want. Remember that if you cancel crafting operation, the ingredients are lost. Understood. Hello, how may I help you? What do you sell here? Mostly potions for heroic adventurers like yourselves. I mm -hmm. also have recipes for customers who like to craft their own. And ingredients too. Even rare flowers from the Badlands. Come back anytime. I'm almost always open. Okay, before we actually check this, I want to check something else. So, <clears throat> crafting. Over here. Okay, so Halbert can craft potions and poisons, Patricia can craft poisons and I can craft poisons and potions. <coughs> okay, so do I have any recipes? I do. A crafting potion of healing requires these three. Scroll of Magic Missile. Okay. This is just my spell book. I have the kits. Do you have a kit? You do. Nice. You have a Poisonous Kit. Uh, can I use this? This weapon is not light, preventing the character from using a bonus attack with the offhand weapon. Okay, so this is a no-no. 
Let's activate our primary weapons. Crafting basic poison. <coughs> we can learn this. Okay. And how do I use it, by the way? Apply on target item. It adds 1d4 damage, safe to negate. Eh. This is the same one, so I guess I can just sell it. Crafting Scroll of Cure Wounds. Scroll of Revivify, okay. Some ingredients. Can I craft something? I need some Galavan Amaranth. Okay, I have Magnesium and Angry Violets. Okay, let me double check. Galavan Amaranth is what I need. Let's see if he has it. Hello, how may I help you? Scroll kit. Ooh, he has some scrolls as well. Thunder wave, magic missile, and curse, uh, cure wounds. Why doesn't he sell this? Does it say? Wait, wait, wait. Why, why can't I? What? Ah. Your status with the Principality of Masgard faction is sympathy. You need alliance to purchase this item. Okay, so yeah, this is his faction. And we need to be more friendly to them to be able to purchase these. Okay, so we have all of these. I could take some of these. It's kind of costly though. Let's purchase two. Okay. And what can we sell? I can sell... Uh, this isn't worth any money at all. She has noble's clothes. Really? This is worth nothing? It should be worth 5 silver. I guess she doesn't buy this kind of item though. Do you buy this one? Oh, you do. So you can take that. Okay, let's see if the other salesperson here buys our stuff. Welcome to Gorim's Emporium. Are you Gorim? That's me, the one and only. Okay. Okay, so now I can sell some stuff. It's not worth much, but why carry this around, I say. Okay, now what can I purchase here? I can purchase some weapons. Sure enough. This is two-handed? Yeah, it is, okay. Leather, scale mail, AC set to four, I have chain mail, you have scale mail. I think you cannot use this, right? It doesn't say, it doesn't say, but I think he's not proficient with heavy armor. We have our food, which we need. And I think I'm also, ooh, I want this. <coughs> I don't have one, uh, one of these. And she also sells the rosary, which I also need. So we're gonna take one of these and I'm gonna take some food. I'm going to take um, 12. That's... Ah yes, I also want some ammunition. So give me some arrows. 40 should be enough. Let's buy this. Okay. 
quest completed. And now what we need. Mr. Quest. Mr. Quest. Uh, oh, okay. Deputies, a word if you please. So famous already. <laughs> I love it. You were in there too. Are you a member of the council? I'm Annie Bagmorda, quartermaster of the Scavengers Guild. We don't have a seat in there, but they all know exploring the Badlands mm. without us would be a bad idea. That's why you should stop by our headquarters downtown. You'll need our services, I'm sure. Is that uh, compulsory? No. But you'll find our services useful. Everyone does. Did Lord Caron not tell you? No, he pretty much stuck to giving orders. Oh, right. Anyway, we offer plenty of help and advice to beginners like you. We are grown-ups, you know. At least, most of us are. Mm, of you're all you tiny. <laughs> well, good luck. They're tough, these scavengers. Fearless. I'd rather visit the temple, honestly. So, what do you think? Should we check out their headquarters? Mm -hmm. It's not far, but I've had enough talking. Let's go kill some monsters. If there's business to be done, we can't afford not to. So this is something that... Wait, okay. Quick shopping. Near a merchant, you'll find a quick shopping interaction. This bypasses discussion to instantly open the merchant interface. You can still talk to the NPC merchant if needed. Cool. I think this didn't exist um, during early access. And I was about to, about to say, uh, this scavenger guild, this lady, this NPC existed in the um, early access, but its features were not available. So I'm guessing that now they are available. Let's see what they do. Ah, you came. You piqued our curiosity. So, what exactly do you have to offer? You don't know. <laughs> okay. What help do you offer? What kind of help do you offer to people like us? Simple. Now, people like you typically carry out missions for the Council. In the marches, even in the Badlands. Sometimes far away, like Captain Merrin. Who's Captain Merrin? You really must be new. She's one of yours. Senior deputy of the council. Anyway, you trek out to some old ruin in the Badlands, kill a bunch of orcs. Well, you're still a bit green, so let's say goblins. Ouch! You're hurting our feelings. Orcs will hurt much more than your feelings, believe me. And stop interrupting, it's rude. So let's say... You find yourself with a whole load of rusty swords, leather armor, shields, too much for you to log back here. Oh, so we're puny as well as green. Yep. Thank you very much. <laughs> so instead, you brave heroes just clear the place of monsters and draw us a nice clean map. Then we take our carts and pick up every piece of junk. I like it. Bring it back, we sell it, and we split the profits with you. We move the stuff. You go off to kill more bad things, everybody wins. For a percentage, of course. What? You could never carry a doll anyway. Not in your little backpacks. <laughs> okay, it makes sense. <clears throat> so if, we, if she can take our excess loot back well, to the city, thank you. I guess that's it for it us. It'd be a good deal of help. Fine. Feel free to visit us any time. Or drop into any scavenger camp. Are there others? Anywhere we can settle. Oh. By the way, if Improved you find Captain Henrik, tell him we're still interested. In what? In getting our people to care Lem. The outpost is perfect for us. Close to the Badlands, with plenty of space for our camp. Right. We'll tell him if we find him. That mm -hmm. would be appreciated. The more you do for us, the more we do for you. Oh, so this cool. business relationship can get better. And I hope it will, friend. I guess we'll see you around then. Sure. Good luck out there. And don't forget, in the Badlands, always keep your eyes open. Huh. We have some chests. 
Hello, Mr. Chests. Ooh. Unfinished biography? Uh, and Dragon's Den advertisement. Okay, so it's just lore, I guess. An advertisement to the grand opening of a dragon's den, I suppose. Okay. Party stash. This chest is yours to use. No one can loot it. You can stash up to 50 items inside it. Many adventurers use this scavenger service to store some of their stuff. Awesome. Currently, I don't really have a lot that I need to store. I am gonna maybe do some management here because Corgan is almost at the um, limit of his light encumbrance. So you have a lot, I have the most. Let's see if I can get, if I can carry all the rations. Okay, this seems fine. Okay, so these are not that important. Um. Ah, okay, so he has the 40 arrows to be purchased. I want to give them to Patricia. Because she's going to be our main range, uh, range damage dealer. With her tiny short bow. And this one, I think we need to actually lockpick. So, I think if this still works as the um, early access, if you fail a lockpick attempt, you cannot try it again. So I'm going to try and improve my chances here by having Mr. Albert cast Guidance, which increases an ally's ability checks for a limited time, to improve the chances of our lady friend here to actually lockpick this chest. Why, why are you? Ah, my bad. Oh ho! Captain Marin's stash, 20 gold pieces, an antitoxin, okay, can I stack them? I can. A potion of healing, and a scroll of revivify, this goes to Halbert. Okay, nice. Okay, so our current objective is now to reach the outpost of Kerlam. We need to go over there. Uh, ah, over here, maybe. City guards. I think this makes me leave this area. Yeah. You are about to leave the current area. Proceed. Yes. Okay. Travel map. Use the arrow keys to explore the map. Click on a destination to plan your travel. Your party will take some time to get there. While en route, adventurers can gather food by foraging or hunting. They can also find crafting ingredients and encounter travelers, remarkable locations or even monsters. A slow pace lets you move cautiously, trying to remain hidden from monsters. A normal pace is faster, but riskier. A fast pace is the quickest of all, but can be dangerous. Rangers will be very useful while in their preferred terrain. You will find more food and are less likely to be surprised by monsters. Well. We have no ranger, sadly, and apparently we can we can choose this travel pace they're mentioning. So same thing as early access. You can set up travel so you don't need to miss uh, micromanage your party. Okay. Whenever someone can level up, a long rest can be started immediately without finishing the day's travel. When a crafting task is complete, you can set up a new one without losing time. You can open the post-rest window after a long rest, for instance, to modify or prepare spells. Understood. Okay, so can I... craft something here? Okay, so I have a crafting bonus of plus 6, you have plus 2, you have plus 4, and you have plus 2. Projectile parts. Okay, so I'm gonna try and craft some arrows. Medicine? Oh god. 
Okay, start crafting. And now I can have myself craft a healing potion. What? They they made this like not shared between different objects. Oh god. Med <laughs> because medicine is properly spelled here. Oh well. Okay. And I guess you can craft a po never mind. You cannot craft a poison. You can also try and craft one of these. Let's see if you can make it. It's it's an a medium one, I have a plus two, so it's a 50-50 chance, I suppose. Now, let's not waste ingredients on this guy. Okay, and now, this is Kersiflan. This is the map, apparently. Although I can't really see what other stuff there is. Copperhead Road, some more places to check out here okay so we are going to go into the Kerlem outpost what does it say this old imperial fort was reoccupied by the legacy council's troops as a badlands outpost but the garrison's commander captain henrik has not sent any reports for some time okay let's travel so let's check travel settings Interrupt and long rest. Uh, I want this. Mm, cool. Uh, sure. I want maximum feedback. So from Kersiflin to Kerlam, it's 60 miles, a three day travel, and requires two long rests. Our travel pace is normal, or fast, or slow. A good balance between speed and awareness. I'm not sure if the awareness counts for finding items. Uh, so I'm gonna try and go just for normal here. And let's start traveling towards Kerlem. Travel routine. Your heroes normally plan their travel so that they are always fit and ready for anything. This routine requires them to travel no more than 8 hours a day and leaves enough time to eat and sleep, and for other activities such as crafting, talking, playing games, playing an instrument and praying. Sometimes the normal routine will be interrupted and your heroes will need to travel while they should be resting. This will add fatigue and may lead to exhaustion. Adventurers know how to push themselves temporarily and then return to their normal routine, limiting camping activities to get more rest so that fatigue is reduced. Okay. So, we collect some ingredients, we did not find any food, we have crafted, crafted an arrow. Okay, let's resume. We have been attacked. Okay. So, off to our first proper battle here. But we are surprised, which is something not good. You have been surprised while camping. You must fight off your attackers before you can leave. Having been surprised, you cannot take any action during the first turn of the battle. This sucks. Don't hold back your spells and powers. You will finish your long rest after the battle, so put all your strength into this fight for survival. This... Ah, okay. Ready in action. This lets your character wait for a specific condition to be met, so they can then interrupt other characters' turns to perform the readied action. In Crown of the Magister, you can ready an, at an attack, depending on your character and their equipment and abilities. You can move, use a bonus action, and still use ready an action. This automatically ends your turn. Okay. You can use shortcuts to switch your equipment. You have three weapon configuration shortcuts by default. The last shortcut is your light shortcut. It uses the third configuration that includes a torch or other light source. If you have the light cantrip in your spell list, the light button will cast it immediately. You can change your shortcuts in your inventory, drag and drop a weapon, shield or other item onto a slot. 
Hand slot to change a shortcut. Okay. So having been surprised, we have we are facing four enemies. Unknown creature. These are kinda close. Which is rather unfortunate. Okay, where is this guy? Ah here. A highwayman. Okay, so surprised, surprised, and now it's Albert's turn. I don't really like that I'm surrounded, being the wizard, you know. <laughs> so what can I do here to maybe help out? I could try and immediately kill one off. This does deal a lot of damage. I could try to debuff them. Okay, who's the first to play? This guy is far away, so he shouldn't be able to attack. This one, maybe. This guy plays after Corgan. This guy is gonna play after me, though. So I think I'm gonna go over here. Because if I go over here, I get an attack of opportunity from this guy. As can be seen by the red square. But if I always walk adjacent to him, no attack opportunity is triggered. So let's go over here. And let's see if we can kill this guy off really fast. I could also use this. 1d6 to your damage and stun your target. Nah. Let's go for a inflict wounds for 3d10 damage if I hit. So on this guy. Yes. Easy. Mm. Okay, now we just end our turn. We have to wait for our friend here, which can do nothing. Now it's Corgan's turn. Wait, when did this guy... Ah, okay, so this guy attacks after Corgan. So let's try and kill him off as well. I can only attack, use an action surge, and heal myself. Okay. So if I'm also adjacent to Cordant, I can impose a penalty on an enemy's attack. So let's do this. Smack. Good. Coming your way. Let's action surge. Attack again. Nice. Let's go over here, maybe, so I can keep both of them safe. Maybe I should be over here, honestly, to keep both of these safe, but let's end the turn. I don't think he can attack. Okay, nice. So, my turn. This one is going to attack first, this one second. This one seems more powerful though. <coughs> so, I think I'm just gonna go for damage here. In this case I'm gonna be using a magic missile, which sends off four magic missiles, I believe because of my... what's the name? The Shock Arcanist Choice. So let's try and hit this guy four times with magic missiles. Dead. So one less to worry about. Let's put myself to safety over here. And end the turn. And now Miss Patricia, she can come over here. She's also protected by Corgan if I do this. And I'm gonna stab this guy. I think this counts as a sneak attack because he's also threatened by Corgan. Let's see. Yes! And as a bonus action we are gonna attack again with our offhand weapon and miss. Okay, Halbert, what can you do my friend? Let's 
let's try and stun him, see how it works. Or miss. By rolling a 1. Okay. I think I can kill him. Oh my lord. Oh! It's just a flesh wound. Dude. A scimitar? A scimitar. This is a long sword. Uh, okay. Okay. Finishing your long rest. After a night attack, you can safely go back to sleep and complete your long rest. To do so, simply click on the campfire. All your characters will receive the benefits of the long rest as normal. A cleric of the Oblivion domain with peaceful rest will not be surprised in future. This time was for the purpose of explaining the rule. Okay. Let's select our party. And we have loot. Okay, so this apparently loots ground items within five cells to save some time, which is nice. We have some gold, a brimstone viper venom gland, an ingredient, silver, uh, dispel magic. Let's. What? Ah. Take the rations, and are they, are these items, they are worth some money. Okay, so let's take them. Man, he was using the great sword. It showed scimitar up here for some reason. Oh. 25 gold. Heavy, ah, uh, no. I don't think he can use it, but let's check. So two rations, leather. Well, as long as I can carry it, I will. I will. Any more loot? I don't think so. Okay. So, let's rest. Also, heal up Mr. Corgan here. Can I heal him up with a spell also? Healing words. Yay! Heal him again! Uh, I said heal. Thank you. Okay. Resume camping, yes. And we can now... Oh, they're already doing their thing, okay. I have finished crafting the potion of healing, so it's also something I can do, make another craft request soon. Uh, the spells I have are the ones I want to take, so let's close this up. I want to put another crafting order on Mr. Cordon here, start crafting, close and resume. No food, no ingredients. Interrupting travel. You can always interrupt your travel manually by pressing the interrupt button. So here. Then you can click on your character's portal to open your inventory and possibly start a new crafting activity, change equipment or check anything you like. Just click the resume button to resume travel. Okay. They are resting again. I'm singing. Singing. Okay, I need nothing, let's go. And we have arrived at Kerlem. A weapon with a versatile attack can be used with one or two hands. If you leave the second hand slot empty, you'll deal more damage with such a weapon. For example, a longsword. Cool. A 
big forest. So that's KLM. We're almost there. It's just up the hill. It's a little too quiet, don't you think? We're mm. in the marches, so quiet can't be trusted. True. Let's keep our eyes open. Okay. So I just want to check something here real quick. Oh, you're over encumbered, really? Okay, better. Uh, can you use this? No. Not proficient, okay. I might just drop this because it's, it weighs a lot for the the reward we get by selling it, but it's fine. Okay, so I think this is a good spot to end this episode. We have arrived at the Kerlem outpost. We have what appears to be a large area here to explore. So we can start fresh on the next episode. So yeah, as always guys, I want to thank you all for being here in the channel, watching some Solasta Crown of the Magister with me. If you guys have any thoughts, if you guys have any questions about the game, leave a comment. If you want to get notified about future videos coming to the channel, feel free to subscribe. And I hope to see you all in the next episode where we'll be taking on the Kerlem Outpost. Until then, stay safe everyone.